This video is relatively short. Uh, it was prompted by a phone consultation I did with a gentleman from Los Angeles who's interested in hair restoration. And what is profound is what he said is something that I realize I don't believe is on my website, but at the same time his insight showed to me that even a lay person can understand some of the principles of recipient site angulation, whatever that means, I'll explain in a moment, better than maybe some of the, the hair transplant surgeons that are out there. So I want to address something with you that is, I don't believe has been explicitly addressed on my website. We're going to bring back our classic head. And these are all the different angles of how hair should grow naturally. We're not going to focus on all of them. We're going to focus on one particular one, which is actually back here. Now, the, the crown is something that we always think we don't see unless we're looking right in the back side. But what I'm going to tell you today is that you can actually see if someone's bald here from the side view, three-quarter view, but you probably not 100% can see it from the frontal view. But we're going to talk about the impact the crown has even on the frontal view. So what we're going to do is focus on a few things. The angles here need to be really low, very, very, very low right here. The reason for that, that's going to create a natural result. But this crown angle should be relatively high at about 45 degrees or more. Why? For one word, lift. Now let's talk about lift potential, what that is. What, a li what lift is, is that when you see someone that has no hair back here, it goes like this and it's flat. If you have someone that has hair back here, it's further rounded and finished the rounding. So if you don't create lift or verticality in your recipient site creation, we got a fly coming in to join me to do this little video. I think it's gone. The goal is to say that lift in that angle will create two things. A greater potential to round the head so that you can appreciate it from all these different angles. And also, it's going to create a more ability to create visual density. When it's very flat, you don't have the lift and fall of the graphs in this area. You can't do that in the front. You'll create an artificial result. In the back, you almost need it so that you can actually create more visual density, more of a natural looking result, and more of a completion of the angulation when you go around the back side. Now, is that lift potential affected from the frontal view? It is. Not as much as all the other side views, but to a lesser extent. Think of it this way. If I've got good lift potential going forward, I'm trying to get that fly out of the way, there we go. Uh, the lift potential here, okay, is going to be able to be seen as a greater visual enhancement forward. So the lift potential does affect all angles. So what this gentleman asked me from Los Angeles was, Dr. Lamb, don't, I, don't the angles here need to be higher? <laughs> and I was blown away because he's actually right. These angles have to be about 45 or degrees or so to create the lift potential. So I want you to think of the crown as something that you may think you don't see from a frontal or side view, but I do. And it's something that you should see it as well.